Wow, this is astonishing actually. Very much detail. There's a lot of detail in this image. Hi guys and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to run Dali Mini or Mini Dali on your computer. Okay. So first of all, we're going to install the program itself or library. So we're going to use this. It's called Min Dali. It is a fast minimal port of Dali Mini to PyTorch. So we're going to use PyTorch in this tutorial. So you guys will need to install PyTorch. I'm going to show you guys how to do that exactly. And just a quick reminder, I'm going to show you guys my specs okay i need to bring my i need to bring the task manager to this other desktop so as you guys can see here i have a gtx 1660 super so if you guys have something similar to this you guys will be able to run this model especially a 2060 or above and another requirement is to have six gigs of ram to be able to run the mod because it takes the mod takes more than four gigs so if you guys have less than four gigs of ram that would not be possible so let's open up uh, the comment prompt we're gonna use this to install pytorch i'm gonna install pytorch we're gonna go with pytorch pytorch okay i'm gonna go to the website and here you guys can see uh, the install section right here and we're gonna uh, select stable uh, 1.12.1 windows peep and here you guys you guys can choose the version of cuda i recommend you guys use this one so you just need to copy this and paste on the terminal prompt with admin privileges and run and you guys can see i already have pytorch installed here so we are good to get started uh now are going to install install this program or library to do that you need to copy this i'm gonna copy and paste i need to delete this dollar sign and we're gonna install and you guys can see that i already have it installed on my computer so now i'm gonna do is to write this program as you guys can see okay we can see the, the actual code to do that i'm gonna show you guys how to do it better right okay so let's open up Gianni, which is my default code editor for Python. And we're going to create a new file. I'm going to save on coding, workspace, tutorials, Mindali, run. I'm going to create this file and we're going to import torch. We need to import torch. We're going to, from Mindali, we're going to import Mindali. One thing that I think you guys need to do to have a better experience, because this new this will download the file, the models on your default hard drive that would be my c drive and i don't have much space left on that so we need to set a directory to save that model to i'm gonna go with model dir and i already have here the root to that folder as you guys can see here okay so in this folder i'm installing models and now we can instantiate the model with models root okay i need to pass mindali i forgot to do that models root equals uh, model dir we can actually change this, okay? I'm gonna change to this to be more legible or readable. We need to pass the D type. It's gonna be torch.float32. If you guys had a computer card, I think they say here that you could use a float 16 to save. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Let's do that later to test. Device, we're gonna use CUDA first. This is going to use the GPU. And later we're gonna use the CPU to see how long it takes to run the model. So that's for this. Now we're gonna pass your parameter. You guys can see this line here. I don't know how to take that. Let me see here. Let's go with another argument, which is is mega which is basically saying we're gonna use a big model we're not gonna use a big model and is reusable is reusable 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 equals true so this is it for the model association now we're gonna create a loop i'm gonna create a loop to enter multiple prompts i'm gonna create a variable called prompt it's gonna be get the input i'm gonna convert to a string and enter a an image prompt I want to do that. And now we can generate an image. We will actually generate a grid of images to visualize. We're going to call image, which is going to be equal to model.generate image. This has a argument text, which is going to be prompt. There's a there's a seed argument. I'm going to pass that now. We got a grid size, which is going to be three. And is seamless, seamless. 
equals false. We also have other arguments. We got a temperature. Temperature equals one. Up K. These are some arguments that this model uses. We're gonna use this one. The the rest will be default. And now we can save the the model itself. So to save the model, the image, I thought about using a hash function. So you guys need to install this library called hashlib. So I'm going to install hashlib, hashlib, you guys can see here. You guys can see I already have it installed. I'm going to import hashlib in this function. Now we're going to create a function called create hash and then we're gonna go with prompt because we're gonna use the prompt to create a hash uh, which is not very secure but i think this is gonna be an interesting way to create a hash and we're gonna go with return int hashlib dot char 56 prompt dot encode utf hyphen a dot x x digest and I'm going to go with 16 is one of the arguments. And the other one is going to be the power of 10 to the power of 8. So we got this function. Let me see if I'm forgetting something. Seems to be okay. I did I close that. Let me see here, guys. We're going to. So now we have the image here. I'm going to save the image to the disk. So I'm going to uh, create a new folder on that. You guys can see here. This is the folder that we have. We're going to create a new folder called images. And I'm going to write this to the disk. Image. Save. Images. Baja. Uh, I'm going to pass dot p png and dot format. Now I'm going to pass the function create hash. And I'm gonna pass prompt. Okay, nice. We can clear the prompt using, I think, system. Using a system call, but I don't wanna do that. I just wanna run now. And because I already have this model downloaded on my computer, I should be able to start using as fast as possible. Now, let's see exactly how this model will perform. So, you guys can see here, I'm loading the model into memory. And we can see the CUDA utilization. I'm gonna close this, and okay, we're good. So let me let me start uh, with the prompt. A cat wearing glasses, walking, walking towards towards someone. Let me see. Temperature, 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 temperature. Yeah, I should have I should have saved that that function. Let's let's try again. Let's go with cat, just cat to test top. It's not top, stop, it's top K. I've written some things wrong here. Stop K. Let's go with just cat to see. We forgot a seed. We didn't specify the seed. Minus one. I didn't want to pass many parameters. So cat. Uh we should be able to generate an image here. Let's see. We are doing some computation. As you guys can see here, it's doing its work. I think we're done, right? Yeah, we're done. So this is the image that we are we were able to create using Dolly Mini or Mean Dolly. It is just a cat. Let me try it. Yeah, we can actually cat uh, wearing glasses. And it takes a while, but it's actually doable on your local GPU if you guys have access. And I'm going to run on CPU soon to see how much it takes. I think it's doable. You just need 8 gigs. Yeah, it's definitely there. And we were able to see this one. Uh, this is correct. Let's go to another prompt. A, a Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu holding a Dogecoin. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what this model will create. And we should definitely be able to run this on CPU. I want to be the first one. And I should see how if we use the plot 32, plot 16 actually, if we can save on memory. Yay. <laughs> yeah. We created, uh, we actually created a coin with the Shiba Inu, which is interesting. It didn't understood that it's a, a dog holding a coin. Uh, let's try another one. A monitor stand made by Apple. Let's see if it's going to make something astonishing. Let's see how, how, what kind of output it will generate. And you guys can see here that each image will generate a different file name using that hash function. Not bad, actually. Definitely does not have the detail that we need to be able to see the, the image. Let's go with a, a mouse pad made with glass which is something that i was actually looking into yesterday which are mouse beds made with glass i think it's definitely something that we will see in the future 
more people using it. Okay, okay. Some one, some of these are very interesting. I'm gonna try to change the seed to something like 42, and I'm gonna change the load to 16. I'm gonna close this, and I'm actually running the bigger model. I'm running the smaller one because I don't have enough VRAM to load that model. But I, I wanna see if this will give me more VRAM, and I will be able to run the bigger model. A shot of the moon red moon and i did like that this function to generate each each random is not actually random but the hash function actually links the the description to the the prompt for the image so i could reverse engineer this so this is one thing that i was looking into so let's see some prompts seems to take longer yeah uh, as guess you see here it's using way less memory always good now I, I read that i was using float 32 and now it's taking longer yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a spike here in memory usage. Wow, this is astonishing, actually. Very much detail. There's a lot of detail in this image. A lot of detail. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Let's go with a image of Jupiter in high detail. It's taken taken by the James Webb telescope. So if you guys are enjoying the video so far, it would help if you guys leave a like to this video. YouTube actually liked that. So you guys can like the video and subscribe. That would be amazing. So let's see if we can actually generate an image of Jupiter in high detail. Next, I'm going to test the CPU generating these images. I want to see how the CPU will handle. If we can run this on a, on a, a GPU in a couple of seconds, I think the CPU will take longer, maybe 10 minutes to generate a single image, but I, I think that's going to be worth it. So here's the image. Okay, it's not detailed. It doesn't understand actually that much. I'm going to try the bigger model. Actually, I'm going to try the bigger model, guys, first. I know that there was definitely not work. <laughs> it's going to use so much RAM and I don't have enough RAM, VRAM to run this model. So this is why I was looking to the 3060, which has 12 gigs of RAM. So for this kind of thing, it would be better. Here you guys can see loading the, the model into memory. And here we go. Are we, are we actually going to do that? Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. It's using 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM and I've opened Visual Studio without the need to. I'm going to close, I'm going to remove, open this one test, but I'm not using this. E, we crashed. <laughs> yeah, we crashed, guys. I don't have memory to run this. Let's go with false here. I'm going to use the CPU now. Okay, let's go use the CPU. It's going to take a while to load again. But this time using CPU, we're going to see the CPU usage spike <laughs> a lot. Okay, a car, a car, a broken car in the 60s, Los Angeles. Okay, I think we don't have good in it. We cannot use load 16 with CPU. We can only use float 32 because um, float 16 is a hardware a function, a broken car in the 16s in New York. I want to see if it has this notion of time. And we are, yeah, we are actually doing that. I want to see the memory usage. It's not using a lot of, of, of RAM. It's using 2.4 gigabytes, but it's actually using a lot of the CPU. And let's see if we are able to run this on CPU. I think it's going to work, but it's going to take a while. Yeah, I think if we were on GPU, it would be already done. But this is being done, but the CPU would take a while to, to run the, the model. Maybe it would take longer than I thought it would. Let's take a look at the image that we already created. Shiba Inu, cat, a cat wearing glasses. There is just this one, the top corner one, the top right corner one is pretty good or left, depending on which side you're looking at. Um, the monitor stand is not that really good. This one is pretty good. This one as well. But this one is astonishing. I think it comes down to the data set. It should, it should have lots of images from the, the moon and red moon to have access to, to be able to create this. So in this horizons, <laughs> it's amazing. 
we still uh, working. So I'm gonna mark the time that we're gonna take to run this. I'm gonna drink some water. So we'll be back soon. So you guys can see it takes a while to generate image on CPU. So if you guys really want to test this out, I recommend you guys using G because running on CPU takes a while. Yeah, it really takes some time to run on CPU. Are we close to do that? Yeah. Yay, we were able to do that. Which image? Okay, this one. So this is the image that we were able to create using CPU. Okay guys, so you guys saw how we were able to create this images running on our local machine. If you guys really like this video, don't forget to hit like button and subscribe. And if you guys could, you guys could support the channel by becoming a member. That would be much appreciated. Okay, so thank you guys for watching this video. See you guys in the next one.